Hi, this is Dr. Daniel Miller. I'm a board-certified chiropractic neurologist practicing in Johnson City, New York at Complementary Medicine and Healing Arts. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how to help improve your cerebellar function. The cerebellum is intricately associated with movement, with posture and tone. So today we're going to talk about when there's an imbalance in your cerebellum, some very simple things that you can do to help bring that part of your brain up and improve the quality of your life. So in the, our physical examination, we'll have discovered that you had some kind of problem in the cerebellum. Perhaps it is when I had you put your hands out in front of you, close your eyes and touch your nose, but you missed your nose. Or you stopped and were Jerry coming to the nose. In that case, we saw, and in this example, what we were doing, uh, that was my right hand, so your right cerebellum is off. How do we bring our right cerebellum back up? I've talked to you about this in the office and shown you this simple technique, but we're now going to just go over it for the purpose of the video, so when you got home and you forgot, now you'll know how to do it again. So what we're going to do is we saw a weakness, in this case we're going to say the, the, the right cerebellum, and we want to do some cerebellar remediation exercises. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your finger, place it about 14 to 18 inches in front of you. If you have a person helping you, great, they, they can stand 14 to 18 inches away and do the following. And to help increase function to our right cerebellum, we're going to be doing pursuit exercises to where we're going to be looking up to the right and then coming back down to the left and back. Forward. Now the whole key to this is that you want to be able to stay focused on a specific point. It isn't good enough just to go up and down. In fact if you're just looking up and down quickly like that you're performing a saccade. You're not doing a pursuit and the mechanism is not going to be working correctly for you for the area of the brain that we're concerned with. So you want to really focus and if you can have someone watching you, even better, because you're going to be going up. And what you want to do is find out, are you overshooting, undershooting as you're following? So an example of that, and you may not be able to see this great, is, is, so I'll describe it as, I'm following up, and now I'm watching you though, and I noticed that instead of coming up to here, you stopped here, and then you made a quick saccade up to here. Now, that gets into an, a different mechanism a little bit but it's one of the things we see when we see hemispheristic approaches to functional neurology and in that case if you're seeing that in a person what we want you to do is, 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 is narrow down the area into which you're moving also if you wear glasses you may find that it's best to take off your glasses for the exercise so we're going to be moving up eyes have gone up and out to the right and diagonal and down Now, and just like all things that we talk about in functional neurology, we're not so concerned with sets and reps as we are with continuous time of being able to properly, functionally perform a given task. The goal is to go between 45 seconds to one minute. All research has shown for neuroplasticity to occur in the brain, an activity must be performed for at least 45 seconds. Now, you don't have to go super fast because again we want to do a pursuit. We want to have a continuous gradual activity. Where else do we use this exercise not only to increase our functionality with our cerebellum, but also as it relates to our ability to focus and the effects of the reticular activating system in motoricity. So this, this covers really two things for you, is weakness in the cerebellum, but it also strengthens other areas of brain. As with most things in neurology, they have multiple pathways and connections. So if you were going to go to the left, it would be up and down to the left, or to down to the right, up to the left, down to the right. You may notice that you feel tired, that your eyes begin to hurt, tears may begin to form, or you just can no longer focus. When you do that, 
you've reached metabolic fatigue and you, and you want to cease. So you may have a goal of 45 seconds to a minute, but in actuality you may only be able to perform this exercise for 10 seconds. And that's fine. We begin wherever we're at and from there we move. But if we never begin, we never can progress. So it's real important that you give this a shot. Now, this is just one example of using diagonal eye movements for cerebellums and we'll be doing other videos on other activities to improve cerebellar function. So give this a try. Again, the goal is to go for 45 seconds to one minute. If your eyes begin to hurt, you're unable to function, you get tearing, start sweating, any sympathetic type of that, cease, wait a few minutes and try again. How often should you do this? You should try to do it two to three times throughout the day, making sure you don't exceed metabolic rate. If you have any questions, give me a call here at the office at 607-729-0591, or you can contact me off our website, www.naturallywell.us. Be well, enjoy the action potential.